إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة ليسوء وجوهكم وليدخلوا المسجد كما دخلوه أول مرة وليتبروا ما علوا تثبيرا عسى ربكم أن يرحمكم وإن عدتم عدنا وجعلنا جهنم للكافرين حصيرا صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا مولانا محمد كلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد أفضل صلواتك My respected brothers and sisters and honorable elders السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Last Friday, we talked about the history of Jerusalem, the history of Bayt al Maqdis or Al Qudus. And we learned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of two periods of the history of Jerusalem wherein Bayt al-Maqdis or the city of Jerusalem met with a total destruction, a complete destruction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made mention of that in Surah Al-Isra. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَا تَعْلُنَّ عُلُوًّا كَبِيرًا And this destruction or the total destruction of Jerusalem came as a result, as a consequence of wrongdoing and not wrongdoing on an individual level but wrongdoing on a collective level wrongdoing as a nation as the society as the community all of it took part in that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful there's no doubt about that we say this verse all the time bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most kind. The very merciful, the very kind. Because there is none who is or who can be more merciful and more kind than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't punish either an individual or a nation on its mistake all at once or at first time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps giving warnings. Not just one warning, two, three, more, more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously gave warnings to the nation of Judea. 
the nation of Judea was this area, the headquarter or the capital of which was Jerusalem. It was a province under the Roman Empire later in the time. Last Friday, we learned about the first part of the total destruction. The first time the destruction came to the city of Jerusalem or to the nation of Judea was many, many years even before the birth of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Some say it was 600 BC. 600 years before Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam's birth. And some say it was little more than 600 or little more than, little less than 600. But around that time. And that destruction came at the hands of a king, a tyrant ruler, a tyrant king of Babylon, known as Banu Kadnadar or Bukhtun Nasr. This was the king who had already taken over the lands around the kingdom of Babylon, which included the king, kingdom of Nineveh, which is the name that you're hearing nowadays in the news. It is a province of modern-day Iraq as well, Nineveh. And in those times, Nineveh was also a kingdom, but it was overtaken by the king of Babylon. So he had expanded his kingdom. He had included these territories, and he had stretched his kingdom all the way to some territories even in Persia. So his kingdom was known to be the greatest kingdom and the most powerful kingdom at that time. So the king of Babylon attacked Jerusalem. And since the people of Jerusalem, the Judean nation, they had fallen deep into the rebellion and into the disobedience of Allah, and they were disobeying the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last Friday, I shared with you some excerpts from the Old Testament as well, where their prophets, the prophets of Banu Israel, and most importantly, Yes, Ayah, Ayah alayhi salam, or Isaiah, and Yarmayah alayhi salam, or Jeremiah, and Zakariya alayhi salam, they all had warned their people that don't do this, don't do this, otherwise Allah will punish you, Allah will punish you. And they gave open warnings that this is what will happen to you, this is what will happen to you, but they did not listen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inflicted the punishment by using this king of Babylon. And as he entered the city, he killed all those Jews that were there. And he destroyed Bayt al Maqdis, he, he destroyed the, the place of worship, the masjid built by Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam. And he destroyed everything else. And then he left. So the city of Jerusalem became a barren land, a barren ground, a deserted and abandoned ground for a long time. And it remained that way for seven decades. And according to the predictions made by the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are also recorded in the Old Testament, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that Allah will punish you and you, those of you who will live, they will be taken as captives. They will be taken as prisoners. And this is what the king did, the king of Babylon. He took all of them to Babylon, to Iraq. And he kept them there as prisoners, as slaves, for seven years until the time changed. And exactly after seven years, the new king who came into power, he had mercy on, on, on the people of Judea and he let them go back to their, to their land and let them resell. So they started living in Jerusalem again. And that's again almost 400 years 
before the birth of Isa alayhi salam. And now, in the beginning, they learned a lesson from their mistakes and they were fine. But as the time passed by, they started going back to the old habits. The old habits of treachery, the old habits of rebellion, the old habits of disobedience, the old habits of bad character, the old habits of disobedience to Allah and the messengers, and the old habits of making fun of the prophets of Allah, the old habits of torturing the prophets of Allah, the old habits that <clears throat> at first caused them to face the destruction that they, that they faced. Now they went back to the same old ways. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again continued to send messengers one after the other. There was never a time when there was not a prophet of Allah who was there with, with these people. Even in their days of captivity, according to some historians, at least one prophet or two prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with them in order to continue teaching them, those who were in captivity. According to some, it was Daniel alayhi salam, and according to some, it was Uzair alayhi salam. One of these two messengers of Allah, or one of the, or both of these prophets of Allah, continued to remain with the people of Judaism in order to at least rebuild them and reconstruct them and raise them again, bring them back to Allah. Because the only way they could regain what they had lost is by reconnecting with Allah. You can never rebuild by going away from Allah. You can never reassemble yourself by going away from Allah. You can only regain, reassemble by coming back to Allah, by reconnecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they did, they reform, they learn, and they, they reassemble themselves. And finally Allah gave them the land back. And that was another time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them that I'm giving this back to you as a test. If you continue to obey me, and if you continue to listen and follow the prophets of Allah, you will continue to have this. But as you turn back, we will return. وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا عَسَى رَبُّكُمْ أَنْ يَرْحَمَكُمْ وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا If you return to your old ways of rebellion, we will return with our punishment and we will punish you again. So, as the time passed by, they started falling back on their tracks and they started falling back into the misery that they had first found them in. So, the time came when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Imran, blessed Imran with Maryam alayhi salam, a daughter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And around the same time, when Maryam alayhi salam grew up a little, she was dedicated to the service of Allah and to the worship of Allah. So she was given a place inside the masjid, inside the, inside the Bayt al-Maqdis, where she would serve and she would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Zakariya alayhi salam was the one who was made her custodian, who, were made, who was made her caretaker, and he happened to be her uncle as well. So Zakariya alayhi salam, he would come and he would bring the food from time to time, Say, Sayyidatina Maryam alayhi salam. And every time he would enter, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Surah Ali Imran. Every time he would enter to bring her new food or fruits or whatever she needed, he would find that she has fruits that cannot be found anywhere 
in the market that are out of season, that are not from there. And nobody, nobody else had access to Maryam alayhi salam except Zakariya alayhi salam. So he would ask her. He said, Qala ya Maryam, anna laki hada. Oh Maryam, how are you getting this? Where are you getting this from? The fruit. She said, Qala tuwa min indillah. She said, this is all from Allah. Allah is giving me this fruit. Maybe Angel Jibreel alayhi salam or another angel was bringing this fresh fruit to Maryam alayhi salam because she had devoted herself to the service of Allah, to the worship of Allah. And this is what Allah does. For those who devote themselves to the worship of Allah, to the obedience of Allah, Allah gives them from where they do not even imagine. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Whoever fears Allah, Allah makes a way out for them from all kinds of hardships, for all kinds of difficult moments in their life. Allah makes a way out for them. And in addition to that, Allah gives them their sustenance from where they did not even think that they would come. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed to Maryam alayhi salam as well. So when Zakariya alayhi salam, he saw this open miracle in front of his own eyes, he became even more hopeful to Allah. And he prayed to Allah in these words. He said, Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyiba. Oh my Lord, bless me with progeny from your own that is pure and pious. Inna ka dua. Surely you alone hear our prayers, hear our supplications. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did accept the supplication, the prayer of Zakariya alayhi salam and blessed him with a son. فَنَادَتُهُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّ فِي الْمِحْرَابِ so the angels called on to Zakariya alayhi salam while he was engaged in prayer inside of mihrab. Allah gives you the good news of Yahya. Musaddiqan bi kalimatim min Allah. Yahya will be the one who will confirm the word of Allah, who will confirm the truth with the word from Allah. He will be the master. He will be the real and true master. And he will not marry. And he will be a prophet from amongst the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the good news given to Zakariya alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in several places this good news given to Zakariya alayhi salam. In Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when he gave the name as well, this is the Prophet of Allah, whose name was also given by Allah. Allah named him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ سَنِيَّةً We have not made anyone like him before, or anyone with his name. No Prophet of Allah has the same name as the name of Yahya alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Zakariya alayhi salam in his old age. And when, when his life was also very old, despite the odds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed his power and blessed them with a child named Yahya alayhi salam. And when Yahya alayhi salam was born, only a few years later, According to some reports, three years or four years later, Isa alayhi salam was born. So this is the last period of the prophethood in Banu Israel. After Isa alayhi salam, no prophet of Allah came in Banu Israel. And the only prophet of Allah who came after Isa alayhi salam was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and he came in Mecca. So this is the end of the prophethood in Banu Israel. This is the final period, the last period of prophethood in Banu Israel. So now when Yahya alayhi salam grew up, he began preaching. He was a prophet of Allah. He started giving da'wah to people. 
And he was a brave Prophet of Allah. He never hesitated. He never compromised with his duty of da'wah, with his duty of preaching to the people of Judea. So he would preach the people of Judea and his, his mawa'id, his lessons, his teachings became very effective. And people began to flock to him, to listen to him, to learn from him, and became, be, be, began to follow him. And this, this caused an alarm, a threat to the kingdom of the king of Judea at that time, whose name was Herod. And this king is known to be known to be the murder of his own family and the murder of very many rabbis and many Jews. He was the king of Judea, but he killed, he's responsible for killing thousands. And he's also known as the evil genius of Judea. So this king, he became, he felt threatened by the growing popularity of Yahya alayhi salam. And he said to himself that if the popularity of Yahya alayhi salam continues to grow, he can topple my kingdom and he can take over. And he did not want that to happen at any cost. And he was ready to do whatever it takes to stop the momentum of the growing popularity of Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam. So he tried to create all forms of obstacles in order to hinder the continuing popularity of Yahya alayhi salam and growing number of his following. And then something happened. He did something that was against the teachings of Judaism. And Yahya alayhi salam, without any hesitation, he started criticizing the king of Judea, King Herod, openly and publicly. And he did not like that. He did not like to be criticized. Therefore, he became even more defiant and he started planning and plotting to kill Yahya alayhi salam, na'udhu billah. These people had killed the Prophet of Allah even before. This was not the first time in the history of Judaism where a Prophet of Allah, a Prophet of Banu Israel was killed. The father of, Zakari, the, the father of Yahya alayhi salam, Zakariya alayhi salam, was also killed. This family is a family of martyrs. So, then, something happened, an incident, and the wife of this king, she encouraged King Herod and convinced him to kill Yahya alayhi salam. And so he did. He killed Yahya alayhi salam, and then he severed the head of Yahya alayhi salam, And that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law of retribution came into movement. And now Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, he was also from the same family. He became preaching. And he started preaching openly and publicly after Isa, after Yahya alayhi salam was gone. So the king did not like it. And soon after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished this king who was the murderer and the killer of Yahya alayhi salam by sending a king from Nabataeans who came, who invaded the city of Jerusalem but did not do much destruction except he killed the king Herod. He killed him. And he killed his entire family. And Jews at that time realized that this happened because he murdered Yahya alayhi salam. But instead of learning their lesson, instead of repenting to Allah 
they continue their rebellion against the Isa alayhi salam. And finally, they plotted to kill Isa alayhi salam as well. They got the support from the government of Judea and also from the Roman Empire. And they plotted to kill Isa alayhi salam, to crucify Isa alayhi salam. And they did in their assumption, in their thought, in their mind, they killed Isa alayhi salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow them to kill Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Isa alayhi salam, not resurrected. Resurrection comes after death. Isa alayhi salam never died. Isa alayhi salam instead was raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the heavens alive with his body and with his soul. It was not just his soul that left and it was not just his body that left. It was his soul and his body that left to the heavens. That was raised from the earth into the heavens. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى Remember when Allah said to Isa alayhi salam, Ya Isa, inni mutawafiq. I'm going to take you completely. The word mutawafiq does not mean that I will take you piece by piece. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will take you completely with your body, with your soul, with your conscience, everything. And they will not be able to harm you even at least. Even in the least, they will not be able to harm you. They will not be, do, they will not be able to do anything to you. Isa a.s. was confident. Allah had already assured him that these people who are trying to crucify Isa a.s. who are trying to kill Isa a.s. just like they killed his cousin Yahya a.s. Just like they killed his uncle, Zakaria alayhi salam. Just like they killed many of his predecessors. Allah said, I will not allow that to happen to you. One of the things that I would like to point out here before I conclude, the reason why they were not able to kill Isa alayhi salam, among many reasons, there is a very technical distinction between a prophet of Allah and a messenger of Allah, a Nabi and Rasul. Anbiya are many. All those, all those people, all those prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who were the recipient of divine re revelation, they were Anbiya, they were the prophets of Allah. And they were many, more than 100,000. Among these more than 100,000, the Rasul, the messengers were few. According to some reports, there were little over 300. And among the most well-known ones are the five. Ulul Azmi min al-Rusul. Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. The scholars have explained that it has happened in the history. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also mentioned that there were times when even the prophets of Allah were killed and were murdered. But there has never been a time in the history of humanity when a messenger of Allah, when a Rasul was killed. Look at the history of all the messengers of Allah, all the Rasul. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Didn't the Munafiqun, didn't the Jews, didn't the Christians try to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa didn't the mushrikeen try to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They did, but they could not. Isa alayhi salam is another example. He was, a, he was a rasul, he was a messenger of Allah. And they did try to kill him, but they could not. They were able to kill Yahya alayhi salam. He was not a messenger of Allah, he was a prophet of Allah. He was nabi, but not rasul. Likewise, Zakaria alayhi salam was a nabi, but not rasul. Ibrahim alayhi salam, they threw him into the fire. They threw him into the huge fire. But the fire did not even kill him. Because he was a Rasul. Nuh alayhi salam, 
He was there with these vicious people for 900 years. And they probably tried to kill him many times. But they could not. So this is one of the most important distinctions that we should remember as believers. That this is the reason why these people were not able to kill Isa alayhi salam because Isa alayhi salam was not just a prophet of Allah. He was a messenger of Allah. He was not just a Nabi. He was also a Rasul. Allah